Thank you, thank you. Um, we are the group here. Well, we, we had to change clothes. <laughs> We've been teaching dance. We're teaching dance all throughout today. Our next session will be teaching Cajun. So we taught, taught Zydeco a while ago and uh, got a little exercise and got a little sweaty. So we're changing clothes so while the rest of the group gets here. But anyway, we are the Les Dancers de la Capitale de Baton Rouge. We're part of the Cajun French Music Association, the Baton Rouge chapter. And uh, the Cajun French Music Association has chapters throughout South Louisiana, and there's one in Texas. It used to be a little bigger than it is now, but we're hanging on. Uh, what we do is promote the Cajun culture through music, uh, language, song, and dance, and food, of course. So we want to preserve the Cajun culture because, uh, you know, as time goes on, cultures get watered down and things evaporate. So we're trying to hold on to what was, uh, was once the Cajun culture. And it's okay for change, but we just want to try to preserve some of the past uh, because, uh, like uh, people my age, their parents' first language was probably French, and they went to school and they had to learn English. And so the next generation, my generation, we didn't get to learn French. So it skipped over. So that part's gone. Of course, now there's Codafil and some stuff, and uh, French is coming back, but I, I don't speak it. So. The, the, nuns would, the nuns would spank their hands. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, anyway, so that's what we're going to do, and, and uh, our part of this, uh, what uh, Dr. Rasmussen wanted us to do was to explain the interest of, of dance with the Cajuns. So first I think we need to talk about how the Cajuns got here, right? So we have some, uh, some good little history right here. You want to hand some of those out? We don't have enough for everybody, sorry, but this is a good overview of, um, if you'd like to read it, it's uh, for later. But it, uh, in, in 1600, uh, the, the Acadians came from France to settle in what's now Nova Scotia. Um, they came from Brittany, Normandy, and uh, Picardy area of France. And they settled in Nova Scotia. And, converted that island, they, uh, they converted the waterways and learned how to uh, harvest the sea because they were coastal people in France. So they, they knew how to control the sea and they made farmland on this island and uh, really were prosperous. So they were there 150 years and then through uh, good politics with the French and the English, you know, it changed hands when they sell it and or one of the royals would marry another royal and it, you know, it'd get handed over. So the uh, uh, Acadians found out that they were living in France and then it became England. And England had a whole different set of rules and they had to pledge allegiance to the king, not the pope, and they didn't like that. Of course, I'm just paraphrasing, I'm making this simple. But anyway, they, uh, they wouldn't renege on, and so the English kicked them out. And why wouldn't they? They were inheriting uh, an already developed land. And so they deported all these people and they scattered them all over the globe. And some of them found their way to Louisiana. This was Spain at the time. And the Spanish were welcoming. They were looking to colonize. And here was a, a group of hardy people that could harvest the sea. Ha, we need that, right? So it all fit. And, uh, they were here and they, they farmed and, well, as they got here, that was 1755 and then guess what? The English came back, you know, <laughs> they couldn't run. So the revolution happened and, and even some of the Cajuns went and fought in the Revolutionary War. They'd like to get back at the Brits. So, but um, they settled here and uh, in, in South Louisiana mostly in the, in the Cajun Prairie, what we call it. Um, it's just south of, of where we are, I think. This was a French outpost, but it wasn't Cajun, but it was French. And uh, they just, um, they, they 
met with the local people. Uh, they blended families, uh, the Spanish, and, and then there were some German folks in the area, and then they blended with them, and the English and Irish, and they got this great gumbo of culture, and everybody ended up speaking French. <laughs> so, go figure. And so you have uh, families with, uh, with uh, Spanish last names that are Cajun and, and German last names that are Cajun. And so all you gotta do to be a Cajun is just, I guess, marry into it. I don't know, the blood, everybody's blood's red, so it doesn't matter. And, um, and that, that's kind of what happened to the music. Uh, everybody had their own style. The Spanish had, uh, you know, they had guitars and fiddles, and they, uh, the, the Acadians, they had uh, the fiddles and guitars as well, string music. And then these German dudes, they had accordion, right? So they all got together and made this great music, and uh, it's a, a pure folk music of, of our era, area. Um, there's not any music like that anywhere else. Uh, of course, it's expanded now. People love it all over. We have, our oldest boy lives in Oregon, and in Portland, Oregon, there is a huge Cajun Zydeco following, and it's all up the West Coast, and it's a big deal. Huh? Oh yeah, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, it's all over the West Coast and they, they like it. And the interesting thing about uh, Cajun music, the Acadians themselves were Celtic, just like the Scots and the Irish and the, uh, the Welsh, they were Celtic, a Celtic people. So this is a Celtic music like uh, bluegrass and, and this, and they even say the, the way the Cajun fiddle is played, kind of a droning sound, it's uh, for the missing pipes. You know, it kind of has that sound. Uh, and that's what, some, uh, that's what some bagpipe players told me anyway. Uh, but it makes sense. And it's a, it's a, you know, it's a good Celtic music, but it's a folk music and it's, uh, it's our music. And uh, we just love it. So there's a lot of dancing that goes with all Cajun music. It's dance music. And it's part of the uh, joy of life. It's uh, everybody participates, the family. Uh, so they would play music on the front porch, and all the family would dance. And of course, most of the family could play music too. It was, it was really incredible. They got, I know, lots of guys. They, if it's an instrument, they can play it. I don't, I don't know how they do. It's not fair, you know. <laughs> they just pick it up and start playing. Uh, and, and the Cajun dance goes hand in hand with it. And there are certain kinds of Cajun dances that, uh, that we try to preserve. But uh, we will teach another class here in about, uh, what time was it, two, two o'clock, something like that. We're gonna teach a Cajun class dancing. And then the, right after that, a Cajun band's gonna play. That'll be on the West Wing. So if you wanna come learn some steps, come over there. Uh, and then we'll be on the main stage at four and we're gonna teach another Cajun class and then another Cajun band's gonna play on the main stage later this evening, about five. And uh, so, uh, are there any questions before we move on to anything else? Anybody, you, you know where the word Cajun came from, right? Just from Acadian, uh, the, the way the uh, Acadians pronounce their name, uh, uh, Cajan. They like to say they call themselves Cajans, and so that's where the word came from. That's Acadian, how they would pronounce themselves. And uh, so, uh, you have anything? Yeah. All right. So, um, there's some artifacts up here on the, the table that uh, I find this uh, interesting. Uh, so, uh, Father Daigle wrote a book on, on the Cajun language. Uh, few years ago, yeah, it's a, it's a dictionary, so you can take the English phrase and translate it into the Cajun phrase, you can do the Cajun phrase back into English, and it's pretty interesting, and these books are still available around, um, and there's also a, a, a DVD and CD, which I guess is pretty antique now, but it's like records. Uh, but there's, there's ways you can uh, learn the Cajun language. And it's not, 
it's not Parisian French, it's different. Uh, we had uh, a group from Codafil, which is the bunch that teaches uh, French emergence in, uh, in Louisiana at different places. Uh, they came to one of our dances in Baton Rouge, and they were all from Belgium, and man, they spoke beautiful French. And I said, it's kind of nice to hear the band singing in your tongue, huh? They said, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> They couldn't understand it. So I said, well, I guess it is a lot different. Of course, though, in World War II, the Cajun guys were very valuable because they could communicate when they went through France and Belgium, uh, the service guys. So that was very important. Um, it, it's different, but it's the same. It's close enough you can communicate. I guess you just talk slow, right? Isn't that what we do? <laughs> yeah, loud. Oh, yeah, you got to talk loud, too. Um, so, yeah, there's some uh, little instruments, like, so you had the accordion, guitar, and a fiddle, and then somebody needed to keep the beat, right? So they didn't have fancy drums, so this is uh, a piece of hay rake, you get off the farm, and it's bent, and it's a triangle, right? Well, we call this a tifer, a little iron, and that's, that's what they called it, and you can ring it and deaden it with your thumb and make different tones. Uh, and they would keep the beat with that. And then uh, later on, they had these, uh, which was a modern version of the old washboard, and that's called a, a frottoir, and that was a, a washboard. Uh, I'd like to call them just a Louisiana bulletproof vest. But anyway, so. Those are the modern version, and they're loud, and uh, so they keep the beat with that. And that's important, when, especially we find when we're teaching dance, the beat is what you step to in Cajun music. And if you don't have the beat, if the drummer's not there, for example, people can't pick it up. And we know the songs, so it's not hard, but the, the drum and the, if, if there's a bass, they thump the beat, and that's what you step to in Cajun dancing, is the downbeat. Um, we have some other stuff here. There's uh, other things. You're welcome to come look at them as we go along. Pictures of over the years, uh, how we've entertained, and, and we go around the country. We've, been, we've done festivals in Minnesota, and Virginia, and Florida, and Alabama, Texas, and different places. Uh, when we travel to visit, out in Oregon, we've been to several events out there that uh, just privately on our own, a lot of wineries and stuff, they'll have a Zydeco band or a Cajun band come out there and, and we'll go dance and we'll think, oh, we'll be the only ones there dancing, wrong. There's a lot of people and then we say, well, they're not gonna know what to do. Wrong again. I was all prepared to criticize and no, no, they haven't. <laughs> so, yeah, we went to this one and um, uh, a dance in Portland and we just thought we'd go and we didn't know anybody and we went in and uh, they wanted to know where we were from and we said well we're from Baton Rouge Louisiana well they thought we got some real people here <laughs> live Cajuns. yeah live Cajuns live Cajuns <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that was fun, and they all wanted to know if they were doing it right, and I said, sure, you're doing it great. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun, and you meet a lot of people that way. We did, um, we've been to uh, Virginia, and did they have a big crawfish fest up there, and I couldn't figure out why they would have a big crawfish festival in Virginia, in Newport News, and then I realized, well, that's the big shipbuilding port, and a lot of shipbuilders that came from Mississippi Coast and New Orleans were up there, so they brought the culture with them, and the locals loved it, so we just fit right in there. And they did a nice job with the crawfish, too, because they had New Orleans and uh, South Louisiana people. Other yeah. states want what we have. That's what we've realized in our travels. Yeah. They want what we have because we have fun, and we dance, and we sing, and we don't care, you know, what anybody thinks. Yeah, and the only drawback is they want what we have. We just don't know we have it. And that's a, <laughs> we 
and, and it, it gets abused a lot, you know. Uh, but we really have something that people enjoy, especially if you do Mardi Gras. You know, Mardi Gras in New Orleans and uh, Shreveport is a lot different than Mardi Gras in Eunice and Lafayette and other little towns. So we like to go. We like to do the Cajun Mardi Gras. We we stay over there. Uh, two weeks and, and we go to all the stuff and it's a lot of fun. It's mostly about family over that way rather than parades, but it's great and there are people from all over the United States. You wouldn't believe the tourists that come in. Uh, you, you, they're just from everywhere and a lot of snowbirds. I, I kind of wish it was snowing now, you know. <laughs> it's hot outside. Yeah, we were, we were going to do that. Uh, so what we, you know, in Cajun music, there's, um, we'll talk about the dance now. In Cajun music, there's basically two kinds of dance that were traditional. It's the two-step and the waltz. And Cajun bands play a waltz and play a two-step. They usually alternate. Over the years, other styles of dancing came to Cajun music, especially after World War II when, uh, the Cajun boys went off and they were all over the United States in the military service and doing different, well they were introduced to all other kinds of music, a lot of uh, big band and, and that kind of music of the 40s and, and that was jitterbug stuff. So when they came back from the war, yeah, they wanted a jitterbug, right? So that worked out with Cajun music and they came up with a, a little shuffle which is uh, kind of a Celtic build on a Scottish and Celtic dance and so the shuffle and the jitterbug and then in the 80s what happened John Travolta made a movie in Houston about the urban cowboy and the line dancing got popular and so people like the line dance to some Cajun stuff so all those kinds of dances are now part of a Cajun dance if you go to a Cajun dance hall you'll see all kinds of stuff so we like to Two-steppers go around the outside, and if you're going to jitterbug, you get in the middle, and then everybody can share the dance floor. Not everybody knows those rules. <laughs> so then you, you got to get your bumper on. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a lot of fun, and uh, if, if your dance hall is elevated uh, on a raised floor, uh, the whole building will start to dance with the beat and the music. It's really... Uh, yeah, has anybody been to La Poussière? You know where that is in Bro Bridge? There we go. La Poussière, it means the dust. And I get, they used to put cornmeal down and that was the wax. They did, so they put cornmeal in, make a dust. And so they called it the dust, but it's a great dance hall. The ceiling's about this high and the whole building will get to dancing. It's, it's really neat. And uh, so that's in Bro Bridge and so, Anything down around I-10 from the uh, from Bro Bridge all the way through to Lake Charles, they're they're dancing all over and around there. Do you want to show them the double couple? This is kind of from World War II. Yeah, we can uh, uh, we can demonstrate that. So this will be uh, yeah. All right, so we're, we're going to do it's like a jitterbug uh, tune, uh, a shuffle jitterbug. And then we take it one step further and we do it with two couples together and we call it a double couple shuffle. So four of us will do that together. It's kind of neat.
so that's a little variation of a shuffle. And then we just add another couple. Those are kind of shuffle moves. So uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. We have a, uh, any questions? Who was leading that? Me. <laughs> I was giving calls. And then, uh, then she, she does the fussing. <laughs> you did that wrong. No. No, I do the cost now. Yes, ma'am. There is. It's a. It's a. And that again, that is a Celtic by origin. So if you've ever seen any Scottish country dancing or Irish country, it's all kind of close to related. And that has that feel uh, turning and we're just not doing the stepping. <laughs> they can have that. Gravity has taken its toll. Uh, so there's uh, the two-step, the traditional two-step. Uh, so we can demonstrate that, what a two-step looks like. And like I say, if you want to learn this, come to the next class. And we're going to go over all this. Everybody learns it and gets out there, and I, we work with you and, uh, as a group. But this is what a two-step looks like. Uh, let, me, let me go put a song on. Here. So notice they, um, they get in a banjo. We call it a banjo position. And their feet are staggered, so they don't, they don't dance toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, and her arm, her right arm is a little little firm, we don't, you don't hold down there, and you don't have a wet noodle for an arm, you hold a little stiff, and uh, he's going to find you a two-step. Yes? Cajun music or Cajun stories. That's a little demo there. Uh, come take our class and we'll get you, all, you guys to do it. All right, so the other thing we got coming up in August, uh, Shane said we could advertise. So we've got uh, the Cajun Festival. It's called uh, the, the Loco Jean Festival in Rain, Louisiana. Rain is, you know where Rain is? Rain is kind of, yeah, it's straight south, uh, just outside of Lafayette. And they have it in their uh, municipal building there, right by the interstate. 
and there's RV hookups if you wanted to bring your RV. But we have a all day, it's a Cajun Music Awards. We put it on every year and give the award out for best musician, song of the year, vocalist, accordion player, fiddle player, and they get awards like Grammys, and it's a big deal, and you know, everybody's dressed up, so it looks like the Grammys on Friday night, and it's for the Cajun bands that have recorded, and people have bought their recordings. It's like the Grammys. And it, they get a, uh, the trophy is a, a T-Fair and a CFMA written on it, and it means a lot in, uh, in those circles in that genre of music. And then, of course, there are Cajun bands that are nominated for Grammys every year. It's, uh, I believe the category is uh, Local Roots or something like that. Uh, they give Grammys for that. And uh, a lot of Cajun bands and Zydeco bands have won those because it's considered uh, a local music. Even though it's, it's pretty popular around the country, it's still considered a local music. Uh, bluegrass is a little more widely known, and, uh, but uh, we're going to uh, a Dulcimer Festival in Arkansas, in, in Mountain View, Arkansas, in September. And so two of our friends are bringing their accordions, and when they show up, man, uh, that's a bluegrass uh, music area. And when they show up, it's like all of these little people following them to where they're going to play so they can play along with them because they, they like it. You know, it's fun. It's something different. And that's a, that's a lot of fun. So we'll be, we'll be at that and uh, going to a bluegrass festival and a Cajun's going to break out, you know. <laughs> but, so we have some great bands. These are a really uh, great lineup. You can go on that Saturday. Uh, it is, they got everything on here but the date. Oh, August 18th, big letters right there, didn't see it. Um, August 18th, and uh, is the 18th the Friday? Friday and, and Saturday. Yes, Friday and Saturday. The awards are on Friday night, there's a band, you can see the awards, but Saturday's the, and we have bands all day, so you open up at 10.30 in the morning, you got Cajun Fire, they're a bunch of young guys, they uh, all go to ULL, and they're, Really good, and Cajun Groove plays after them and Four Horses. I think there's two Grammy winners in that band. Uh, these are top flight musicians. And then uh, Troy Lejeune, Cajun Review, Kevin Knockin, and then uh, Kevin Knockin will end the show at night. And Kevin is very good. He's highly recorded and respected around the area. I think he's even a city council member in uh, Lafayette, maybe. So. Uh, these are, you know, this cream of the crop, and it's a good festival. There'll be a lot of dancing, and that's really what it's all about. They have a lot of food, and there's booths like this one. It, it looks similar to what you would see here, and um, music and dancing, and it's a lot of fun, and it's, it's pretty cheap. I think it's 10 or 12 bucks to get in. It's ridiculous to see uh, Grammy Award-winning artists for that price. Yeah, okay, so um, the waltz. The waltz is, is old, 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 and every genre of music uh, does it. The, the waltzes, uh, there's songs that are probably waltzes you don't even realize are waltzes. If you watch Disney movies in your life, a lot of waltzes in those. Um, Moon River, that's a waltz, you know, so there's a lot of waltzes. Country music, so Cajun's uh, waltzes are good too. It's a good way to tell a story. And the waltz is simple. Um, oh yeah, I'm used to a cordless mic. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how to quickly do a waltz. Here I go. I'm waltzing. One, two. So it's just that hard to do a Cajun waltz. Uh, you know, the Vienna waltz, they do a lot of stuff like that, but ah, we cut that out, you know. Lady gets to go backwards, and we'll put a waltz on it and show you what it looks like real quick.
say something. I want to tell the ladies that when you go Cajun dancing, you're going to want to wear shoes that have a back to them. Because if you notice, we get pushed around backwards, so we have to trust our dance partner to look over our heads. But you are going to want shoes that have a back on them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't mention that. Thank you, Brenda. That's uh, So if you watch real dancers, they got the proper footwear. It's just like you don't go play football and flip flops, you know. Uh, you got to have the right stuff. So, and you can do barefoot, but those toes, whoo wee. Yeah. You know, I mean, when I stomp, it's going to hurt. That's what, uh, she has feet problems. She said, it's my fault. I stepped on her toes. I got I, I declare, though, that I haven't stepped on her toes. She put her foot under mine before. <laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, any questions? Uh, Brenda brought up a point, um, uh, you know, about the footwear. And then while we were dancing, Melba, she's from California and everywhere, lives in Arkansas now. She's been, she's been everywhere. But um, the dance traditional dance is done from the waist down and you don't when you're watching you don't want to look like you're pumping water out of a well you know with your arms so it's it's from the waist down and smooth and the waltz guys if you're waltzing your job is to make that lady the most beautiful one on the dance floor at that time so it's a graceful dance and uh, ladies the men are in charge just tell them what to do okay. <laughs> Uh, that's the easiest way I can put it. And, uh, you know, I've, 
never really done an instruction class like this. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna knock off now. We got to get to another venue and teach. But everybody's welcome to come learn. If we can learn the waltzes in two steps, and we'll be at the West Stage here in about uh, an hour, I think. West yeah, stage. West Stage. Yes, down this side over here. We'll be in the sun. It's great. No. <laughs> Yeah, okay, question. One, one question for you. Outside of South Louisiana, Louisiana, how much do the younger people that are going to be in the Louisiana Academy of Music and Dance, how much do they get in music and dance? How much do they get in music and dance? How much do they get Well, if they happen to be there when it happens, they're into it. But the, yeah, and then they get oiled up, and then they're, they can't. They, they usually, that's their excuse. I can't dance unless I have. Uh, you know, a hundred beers, but that doesn't, that doesn't help. That only makes you think you can dance and you really still can't dance. So, uh, yeah, dancing is not for the inebriated, you know, and we don't, and then young people, when they come to dances, they all like to go out with their drink on the floor and that's, oh no, we can't have that either. So there's a conflict between the ages, but in Lafayette and around that area, it's just part of their life, you know. They grew up with it, so they're they're into it. We can in Baton Rouge, we get some LSU kids, and they'll come to the dance. And when we find out they're from Lafayette, you know, <laughs> so it's uh, the, it's just it's good. And on the West Coast, it's um, it's more people our age that are doing it, you know, dancing that. They have a big uh, waterfront blues festival in Portland. And they, they'll bring up a lot of Cajun bands and, and, and stuff to play in the Blues Festival. And they'll have a Cajun Day and a Zydeco Day, as well as their Blues Acts. And that's 100 bucks a ticket, so kids aren't going to pay for that, you know. So anyway, but it's a great festival, and it's packed all the time. Um, so are there any other questions? It's great having there. Um, if you'd like to belong to the CFMA, you can go online and, and join. You can pick a chapter, or you can just belong to the national chapter. We have uh, some dances here that we're going to have in Baton Rouge coming up. I host a jam session once a month at a West Baton Rouge Museum. If you play an instrument, you can come. It's free. Uh, uh, I always get a host musician in to lead it. Uh, we'll have these uh, famous uh, musicians out of Acadiana, and they'll come over and lead the and we have generally 16 to uh, 20 musicians and about 30 or 40 people watching, and it's free. And so we, we look forward to seeing y'all come take lessons. <laughs>